Collective Radio. What's going on, everybody? We are back. This is episode 151 of the Dark Windows podcast. My name is Kevin. Hi, Kevin. And this week, we are going to, again, continue on our road trip. We are... Uh Oh, yeah. We're going to the Bluegrass State. Fuck yeah, we are, buddy. We are going to Kentucky like a motherfucker. Kentucky. So, as we start off all of these with a little bit of, like, geographical shit... Kentucky is 40,409 square miles of rolling hills, blue grass fields, and it's got two of the two of the major cities in the state are Lexington and Louisville. And yes, it is pronounced Louisville, not Louisville. <laughs> because uh, I always said it was Louisville. Same difference. It, you're not going to call it Louisville, you know. Because my, you're my an sister law said it's 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 not Louisville, it's Louisville. Yeah, there's different ways to pronounce it, but we're not from there. As long as you don't call it Louisville, yeah, you're good. Eh. Uh, they have a population of around four and a half million people, making it the exact middle population-wise of the country at number twenty-five. So, some fun facts about uh kentucky uh the big city louisville was named after the chief frog king louis the uh 16th who helped out during the revolutionary war uh and that's how it got its name because we named it after uh him so i guess thanks france that one time um hey what happens yeah We've been pulling their asses out of the fire ever since. But thanks, guys. <laughs> you know what? That's what we do. The most exciting two minutes in sports, as it's called, the Kentucky Derby, is the oldest continuous running, uh, continuously running horse race in the world. Like, yearly, not like it's just constantly going, you know, because uh-huh. horse, horses would get tired if it was running for that long. Well, um, of course. <laughs> They ran their first circuit around the the track in front of people in uh, 1875. So it's been going on for a minute. Also known as the sport of Kings, which I didn't realize. No, Uh, I did not know that. I didn't either. Kings don't strike me much as horse racing people, but But, well, I mean, it's a, uh, a civilized. What am I trying to say? Uh, event yeah it's a yeah. civilized event the ladies got their big hats I mean, it's civilized until one of the horses breaks its leg and has to get shot in the head on the middle of the track but at least they bring out a curtain so you don't see it happen you know still civilized i guess you know fair <laughs> uh every chevy corvette made since 1981 has been manufactured in bowling green kentucky did not mm-hmm. know that <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, the first time the public saw an electric light bulb was at the Southern Exposition in 1830 in Louisville. Um, okay. Edmondson, uh, Edmondson, Kentucky is home to Mammoth Cave, which at more than 400 miles long is the largest cave system in the world. Oh. So, again that part of the country, there's a lot of weird shit that goes on because you're like in Appalachia. And then uh-huh. you throw in a giant cave system with it, like some wild shit happens. Um, <laughs> before becoming Florence, the city was known as Polecat and Powell. I don't know. I think Polecat's an awesome word for whatever reason. There's a meaning behind there. Uh, I think I Polecat why. was a skunk, wasn't it? Uh, I don't remember, but I, I remember... a skunk or a possum or some shit. Hold on. Something like that. Now I gotta look it up. Uh, Polecat. 
Bull cats oh, are, are ferrets, <laughs> like little right. weasel looking yeah. things. Yeah. Anyway. Well, so, no, but you were right. No, no. So, uh, pole cat is sometimes used as a, a colloquial nickname for a skunk. Yeah, because I remember Hermie used to call pole, uh, skunks pole cats all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, you ready for some dumb laws? Because there's some good ones. Okay. If you get shit housed and you can still hold onto the ground, you're considered sober in the state of Kentucky. That's good. If you get if you get so drunk to the point that you can't lay down and hold onto the ground, you're drunk. But if you can hold onto it, you're sober. Explains a lot for the state, I would say. <laughs> hey, you know, I mean, I don't know. That's pretty good. <laughs> in Lexington, it's illegal to carry an ice cream cone in your back pocket. Oh yeah. Which I mean, I I I guess I get it. The hazard you could drop your ice cream, then you don't have ice cream. Then uh-huh. you're fucked. In London, Kentucky, it's against the law to fuck any parked motorcycle. Didn't say anything about a moving one, but you cannot have sex on a parked motorcycle. Hmm. So kick that shit in neutral and just roll it. Go for it. Uh, bow fishing is illegal statewide, which I thought was kind of weird. Um, I wonder why. I'm not real sure. Didn't, I couldn't find anything, any reasoning for it. It just said that it's illegal to fish with a bow and arrow. So, hmm. which seems pretty dumb. Uh, you could be facing a $500 fine if you dye baby chicks, baby ducks, or baby rabbits blue, pink, or yellow, and then sell them. Unless it's in a group of at least six. You can't sell them individually. Okay. So, like, I get it with the chickens and ducks because they're flock animals, and you can't, you know, usually when you buy them somewhere, you have to buy a specific number. Uh-huh. But uh, I, I don't understand why it's like, well, you can't dye them different colors unless you're going to sell at least six. That seems kind of stupid, but here's one that my uh, my brother should probably watch out for. A woman can only remarry the same man three times. Probably shouldn't word it that way. <laughs> He's only good for once, so he has. Yeah. He has his, yeah. We'll see. <laughs> he might be working on two. Oh God! I say anyway. fuck it, re- fuck it, remarry. Just fucking live together. Ugh. All right. How about some famous folks? Uh, got any ideas as to who we may be talking about here? From Kentucky? Yeah. Uh I I I know of a famous fo- person. Who's that? But I don't want to. I don't want to mention them. Let's see if you got one that I got on my list. Well, I hope not. Who is it? I don't want to mention it because he's part of what my my uh part of my thing. Oh well, let's. Well, why'd you even bring it up then? Because <sighs> anyway, <laughs> um, so a guy that we actually spoke about a couple weeks ago when we did our uh, our Bruiser Bedlam episode. Jim Cornette is from uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Um, didn't put him on the list, but, you know, just general knowledge shit. Um, hero of the Alamo and father of the knife that would carry on his name, Jim Bowie, was born in Logan County, Kentucky. Oh. Uh, uh. Famous Wild West gunslinger and quote-unquote peace officer. <laughs> Kit Carson was born in Madison County. Edgar Casey, who we could actually do an entire episode on. He was a fucking weird dude. He was born just south of Hopk- uh, Hopkinsville, which uh, we have mentioned before. That was honestly probably my favorite alien related episode we've ever done was the uh, the Hopkinsville uh, Little Gray Men. Love that episode. Hey, you know, uh, I had to pick a good one every now and then. That was fucking great, man. One of the best shortstops of all time, Pee Wee Reese, was born in Ekron, Kentucky. Oh. That's fucking old school. Yeah. That's going back a minute. Pee Wee Reese. uh... I believe he played for the Tigers. Uh, I don't think so. It was was a minute ago. Like, he played, like, the same time as, like, uh, like, Ty Cobb and those guys. I'd have, to, I'd have to actually look it up to be yeah. perfectly honest. You know, pretty sure that was before they were allowing black folks to play baseball because then they were like, oh shit, this ain't fair. 
These guys are fucking yeah. better than us. Um, part of the reason that I'm overweight, Duncan Hines, who is a real person, was born in Bowling Green, Kentucky. No shit, really? Swear to God, real person. Uh, Not Reese uh, played for the Dodgers. Dodgers, fuck. Okay, that was close. I thought so, but I was he like, started I with a D. Has he played on their he, uniform somewhere? <laughs> he played with uh, Jackie Robinson. So, ah, okay. No, hey. but realistically, I didn't, know du- oh. I didn't know Duncan Hines was a real person, though. Yeah, not made of frosting or anything. An actual person. Really? Yeah, huh. for reals. I didn't find a like, picture of him, but I was like, "That's bullshit." I I got to put like, it on here because I don't believe it. Name is like Duncan Hines. Yeah, that's that. It's not like you know. It's the last name, like abbreviation or something. Nope. His last name is Hines, H I N E S. Really? Yep. Yep. Wow. Duncan Hines didn't realize it was a real person. Kind of like Betty Crocker, also a real person. Marie Callender's a real person. You know, uh, Mrs. Fields is a real person. That's not her name, yeah. but she's a real person. Aunt Jemima's a real person. She was, but that wasn't her name but either. That wasn't but her name. Also, the uh, first black millionaire in the country. She was, yes. Hold on. First black female millionaire. Right. Right. Good thing good thing we got rid of her because you know racism and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Then we got rid of the, the fucking Indian on the land of lakes thing. The most American thing ever. Get rid of the Indian, keep the land. The uh the best heavyweight boxer of all time, and that's not my opinion, that's probably a fact. Muhammad Ali, Cassius Clay, was born in Louisville. Born and raised. And here's a fun one that I didn't realize until I did some digging. Both presidents during the Civil War, Jefferson Davis and Abraham Lincoln, were born in Kentucky. Jefferson Davis was born in uh, Fairview, and Abraham Lincoln was born in Sinking Spring Farm, which I don't know if that's like a town or if that's just like like a township kind of thing, like a little... A little thingy, but um, also both of them super shitty guys. I mean, Lincoln, well, Jefferson Davis, I mean, they're not shitty guys. They just, uh, Abraham Lincoln, I mean, he, he, he did do some things that, you know, <laughs> I mean, he, he, yeah, did some things that were questionable. Yeah, and Jefferson he sure Davis. Did. And Jefferson Davis just, you know, he took an oath of office, you know, for the South because they elected him. Right. And it wasn't because he was, you know, a, uh, you know, card carrying member of the KKK, black well, folk. The, K- hated, the, the KKK you know. didn't exist yet, but. Well, there was a, a form of something like that. Right. But, you know, he wasn't, you know, I, I don't, he just did it because they didn't want to be told what they can and cannot do. Right. You know, that's the whole purpose of uh, of the country. That's, By- the only, <laughs> the, that's the only reason why the South said, sure, we'll become part of the fucking union. Sure. No problem. We'll join. But guess but. what? He did what in, he did, you know. But in I contrast, mean, Abraham Lincoln also said that if he could have won the Civil War without freeing a single slave, he would have done it that way. Well, yes, he would so, have. Yeah. I mean, but what do you do to piss off your enemy? Well, you free the slaves. You know, it's you not free to the people. piss off your enemy. It's the enemy of my enemy. Use the people against him. Literally. Yeah. In, in in all actuality, if people, you know, if people actually study history and actually look at everything, slavery actually would have ended. Oh yeah, within the next, it would I have ended organically. Would, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, because you know why? the The market of uh, cotton was being flooded. Yep, that with there the invention of the, uh, of the cotton gin, it kind of took most of that away. Well, no, 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 that's why. Exactly. The, the cotton gin flooded the market. Yeah. Because they, they could produce so much, and they were producing extra. Extra. Yeah, way extra. But anyway, 
Okay. Don't need to have a, I guess they, they don't want to have a history lesson from me. No, so. that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. So what, uh, what do you got this week? What I covered, uh, I have to say, I have to be perfectly transparent. A lot of more of this stuff, I didn't realize that it, <laughs> I was looking it up, looking it up, and I went, wow, it's uh, quite uh, quite a history lesson I have going on here Uh-oh. of shit that happened here. But it leads to what, you know, some of the things that transpired, okay? I kind of went for more of a haunting, um, and this is one of the more haunted places in Kentucky. Oh shit! Okay, uh, it's the old Talbot, ca- uh, old Talbot ca- uh, Tavern. Uh, the old Talbot Never Tavern heard of was it. built. No, I, I hadn't either. Uh, it was built in 1779 in uh, Bardstown, which was originally called Salem. <laughs> uh, yep, the land in which the tavern uh, is built was originally owned by a man with the last name of. Uh, Heinz, H Y N E S, and was uh, originally called Heinz Hotel and then renamed. It actually had like several names over the years. Clever trick, uh, cake man. Yes. Changing your spelling. <laughs> <laughs> you son uh, of a bitch. It was renamed to the Talbot Tavern because, well, George Talbot purchased the property in 1886. Makes sense. And he moved in with him and his family uh it uh has been called the oldest western stagecoach stop in america the oh, tavern is, okay. yes the tavern is located at the crossroads of the young west where the post roads north east south and west meet causing every stagecoach that comes through to stop there ah it was built with Flemish bond stone walls, heavy ceiling timbers, and built-in cupboards. The cooking was done in two fireplaces in the rear of the original section. Uh, the traces remain of, the, of a staircase to the loft where men were housed in one room or in one room of two rooms and women in the other. And during this time, when if you stayed at a, a a tavern or an inn, you actually and you actually uh, didn't have your own place most of the time. You actually uh, slept with another man. Sexy. So yes. Oh, can can I jump in real quick? I had to look yeah. it up. That Flemish bond uh, brickwork you were talking about. Yeah. If if you ever see like a brick like building around here. That's exactly what it is. It's just like the yep. overlapping. Yeah, it's 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 your pretty stock standard masonry shit. Yeah, it, architecture nerd had to kind of kicked in. I was like, oh, what's this one? Oh no, it's a mind. lot of uh, uh, it's kind of taken after uh, like English style, you yeah, know, style building. Uh, let's see. So the practice of giving individuals rooms to guess was not introduced in the United States until about 1805. This tavern would see a long procession of statesmen, soldiers, adventurers, artists, and rulers go through its doors. Here's the name of some of the people who actually went to the tavern. How how long were the rulers like standard 12 inches or not that kind of ruler. Oh, sorry. No. Imperial ruler. <laughs> yes. Uh, the first one was beloved president and crazy man, Andrew Jackson. Yep. Fucking nutcase. First, first man to get a speeding ticket. Legit. And to be the first only president I know of to actually be in a duel. Yeah. Uh, as, as opposed to Ulysses S. Grant, who's the first one to get pulled over for drunk driving. <laughs> yes. Uh, then there was William Henry Harrison, another president. Yep. Uh, George, I'm sorry, General George Clark, 
who mm-hmm. actually um, was a general during the Revolutionary War. Yep. American Revolutionary War. He actually used the pa- uh, the tavern as a uh, base of operations. Nice. Uh, he would use it to store munitions and provisions that came from Virginia. And at because at that point, uh, Kentucky, I believe, was the most uh, western state in the Union. I think so. I think Kentucky was technically the fifteenth state. I think they came in after us. Uh, so yeah, they, they, that would have made yeah. them the westernmost. Yeah. Yep. Uh, legends say that during King Louis Philippe's exile, he and his two brothers and other members of the party, uh, desiring to see the new world, arrived at the tavern on October 17, 1797. And during their stay, one or more of the entourage is believed to have painted the murals which were uncovered in the tavern in 1927. No shit. Yes. And keep That's those pretty cool. And keep those uh murals in mind because they play a part shortly. Now is that something they've ever remastered kind of like to bring it back to what it would have originally possibly looked like? Uh I well no because there's a reason why. Ah, okay. And I will explain. Of before the cart. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> cart, cart no, the horse. No, horse the cart is the way it's supposed to be. No, good question so, though. Really good question. But I there's didn't an answer. I raise that. my hand. I don't get credit for it. Well, no, you get partial credit because, but there's an answer for it. So a dozen or more holes, um, are found in the plaster in the room, and which leads me to, well, speaking of those holes in the the painting. Um, it is said that uh, there's a certain gentleman that stayed at the tavern during his travels who put said holes into said painting. John his... Glory Hole Johnson? No. Oh. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. This gentleman did it with his revolver. Uh, and he goes by the name of Jesse James. Ah, okay. Yeah, that makes yes. sense. He, uh, it's reported that he had been drinking a little heavily Bullshit. in the pub one. Yeah, <laughs> I know. He was in the pub one evening, and then went upstairs and to sleep it off. He says that he saw Bert. Now this comes from um, a, a, a source that was a sheriff or whatever that he probably lied to says that he saw birds moving in the murals and actually shot at them, leaving behind the bullet holes uh, that you can see today that are still in it. That dude was fucking high. <laughs> yeah. But he actually, and there's actually another story to um, how they actually got them. And I'll get, I'll talk about that in a little bit. But um, moving on, so the next person who actually stayed there, there is another famous man by the name of Stephen Collins Foster. You might know him by a few that lyrics. Ringing a, that one's ringing a bell. Uh, yeah, you ever heard a little song called, oh, say, uh, oh, Susanna, don't you cry yeah, for me. Yeah, okay, okay. I yeah. knew I knew it from somewhere. Yeah, one of the four famous American composers that ever lived. Yep. Uh, the other one I remember he, is Sousa. He uh, also wrote uh, My Old Kentucky Home in 1853. Uh, the Camp Town Races. <laughs> yeah. uh, Camp Town Races. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I ain't paying he, you to jump around like a bunch of Kansas City faggots. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sing one of them. Uh, there. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> one of them old timey. One of them, uh, you know. <laughs> Camp Town ladies sing this song, dude. <laughs> what in the wide, wide world of sports is going on here? <laughs> oh, fuck. So he also wrote uh, Beautiful Dreamer in 1864. Uh, he has gone... Uh, he actually had gone to Barnstown to actually visit John... Uh, Judge John uh, Rohan, Rowan. 
That's who probably was, how that's pronounced. <laughs> yeah, who uh, who actually was uh, quite the famous uh, guy himself. Uh, he, he had run for Senate and and such in the state in the state. Uh, held it uh, quite a few times. Uh, he also it also played host to Henry Clay Sr. Uh, John Fitch, inventor of steamboats. Ah, John, okay. yeah, and another guy that's you know you like oh really, John James Audubon. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, and least I not mention that uh, good old honest Abe and his family stayed there when he was five years old because they were uh, uh, trying to settle a uh, land dispute, which I guess they actually lost, which then uh, <laughs> that made a move. And they, they lived a lot of different places, actually, throughout his life. Before you know, if, if he, they... If they'd given him a couple years, they could have been like, listen, we're going to make our boy wrestle you for the land. Because he was actually a professional wrestler. And Vampire Slayer. That too, to a lesser degree. Um, also, possibly our first bisexual president. But that's neither here nor there. Well, I mean, after some of the the uh, the letters that actually were um released that were found and actually i think he was he was actually uh, uh. <laughs> that cherry tree wasn't the only one he was interested in hey Just, well uh, you know throwing it out there it's all right whatever <laughs> I, I don't give but a fuck for, dude. but for the time it you know it wasn't oh yeah it was very frowned upon yeah so uh there's actually two more people that actually of renown to actually have visited the tavern. Uh, the last two are Queen Marie of Romania. Yeah, she, she was actually important. yeah she was actually known to have lunched in the tavern in 1926, and also one of the greatest generals of all time, General George Fucking Patton. Yes. Yes. You know, I was thinking about something earlier today, and I want to get your opinion on it. Little off yeah. topic. So, a lot of people shit on the don't shit on on, on, on General Lee. Okay, they Why? don't. Well, it's because of slavery and shit, and the fact that he was a Southern he general. Sl- he, right? He, no, no, no. I, I get that. I get that. He was also part of that fucking uh, West Point class where there was like 50 fucking like generals and colonels that all came out of it. Like he was a couple years after, uh, after Grant. Now, if the roles were reversed and he fought for the North and Grant fought for the South, do you think that it would be the same feeling towards Lee as there is towards Grant? Or it'd be like, no, this motherfucker was the best. Uh, he was a fantastic general. I mean, well, I don't know. I mean, he, he he could he actually had the chance, right, to be uh, the the actual uh, leader of the North. But he, he fought actually, for his home. Well, yes, as he referred to it, his country. Because he yeah, he was a Virginian, so he was a Southern yeah. yeah. Guy. Well, I mean, okay. Here's a little little bit of history. I'll I'll give everybody a little bit of it. Um, so. It wasn't until well after the uh, Civil War that it people didn't refer refer to it as the United States of America. It was, you know, just well, or just America. <laughs> yeah, just the United States is America or whatever. You know, there yeah. wasn't really. The, the the of America wasn't really prominent. Everybody was more like, "This is my country. My my state is my country." Right. There was, and uh, that's and that's what almost people, like city states, like in like Greece. Yeah, and that's why, uh, 
the Civil War, everybody always thinks it was all about slavery. No. no. It was because they didn't want to be told what to fucking do with their lives in, right. in their country, in their state. You do not tell me what I can and can't do because, well, I mean, we fought a civil war. We, got, we fought a, 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 a revolutionary war, a basically right. a small civil war with our, you know, you could call it a civil war. It was with our benefactor to, to be free, you know, to throw off that, the, the bonds. Throw off the bonds of imperialism. Yeah. That, you know, that, we, that was that was our fuck you dad moment. Exactly. And yeah. it, you know, we didn't you know, every man should be treated equal and you know yes. it, have the rights and this is kind of like, you know, what statehood was all about. Well, the North was like, no, 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 you know. And because they had all the money. Yeah. So they thought they were in charge. Yeah. 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 The, the Civil War was a, was a was a motherfucker. Like there was a lot more that goes it's, into it than just you know, you know. Yes, the best thing that came out of it was the end of slavery, but there was a lot of shit that went into it. It wasn't just mm-hmm. fucking you know. We weren't yeah. being fucking. It wasn't. Uh, you know, it, it wasn't the North being you know conscientious towards other people and like a a human rights violation. It had nothing to do with that. No, was, because you know, a lot of people in the North were still assholes to yeah, black folk. Still are. <laughs> yeah, which doesn't make any goddamn sense, but yeah. whatever. Anyway, so yeah. let's move on. So, the, as I had said, the tavern had been called different names over the years. Um, the names were the he- uh, Heinz House, uh, Bardstown Hotel. Chapman's House, Shady uh, Barrow Hotel, the Newman House, the Talbot Hotel, Talbot Tavern, and the Old Stone Tavern, which is what it still is now today. Okay. Uh, the Talbot Tavern was the official name from 1885 to 1968. That's a so, long time. And, yeah. And then it became the Old Stone Tavern. Um, he's in 1968. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's a lot. Yeah, in the scheme of things, that's just a just a hair under 200 years. Yeah, <laughs> which I mean, England would look at that and go, "Oh, really? We've got bar stools that are older than that." Exactly. Yeah, that, that's fair. <laughs> so you fuckers the, got like thousand year old pubs over there. So true. Uh, the Talbot Tavern was officially. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, no, let me start again. So. On March 7th of 1998, uh, a fire damaged the tavern severely. It damaged the roof and the second floor mostly. Mm. The Old Talbot Tavern reopened as the Old Talbot Tavern on November 8th of 1999. So, over a year later. Yeah. Uh, the Almost two. Almost. I mean, with with, uh, with renovations and repairs, that makes sense. Yeah, you know? yeah. That's not 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 quick shit to fix. Exactly. Uh, the old Talbot Tavern currently serves as both a restaurant and a five re- room bed and breakfast. Uh, a a writer for the Travel and Leisure magazine described it as having quote a slightly spooky charm. <laughs> Yeah, it has been featured in the Food Network on the Food Network and the Travel Channel, and was once ranked thirteenth uh, amongst most haunted inns in the United States. I so hope fucking Guy Fieri went there. Yes. <laughs> um, your, your mashed potatoes are slamming. Shit, this goes. <laughs> yeah, I fucking love that guy. <laughs> so before we move on, I kind of made a to the haunted portion of this. You okay. uh, You know how I said I knew a guy that was uh, a famous guy that was from from K- Kentucky, and I said I didn't want to mention it until it got in here. Well, I yes, forgot I recall to that. mention it. 
Yeah, I forgot to mention his name earlier when we were saying okay. the famous people. Yeah, this guy's so, pretty famous. I was because... going to say, something tells me that this is the biggest name that you that, that has ever been there then. No, well, oh. in one way, he is David a pretty Bowie. fucking... No. He's a pretty goddamn big name because he was a founding member of the NAACP. Uh, this was Alexander Walters. He was actually born in the kitchen of the tavern. No shit. Yeah. <laughs> because his mother was a slave of the Talbots. Oh. And according yeah. to um, to legend has it that he, his mother, when she had him, she actually just gave birth to him and went right back to work. Well, just went back to cooking. That wasn't an uncommon thing because there were stories of uh, of slaves giving birth in the fields and just fucking going on, continuing their work. Mm -hmm. You know, where they just fucking drop a kid and be like, well, somebody's got to pick that up, you know, on the way back through. Yeah, you know, and uh, I don't know, it didn't really, I never really saw anything that said, you know, how she was treated. She may have been, you know, just treated fine. Right. You know, I mean, a lot of women did this back then where they we're like, well, I have a kid. Okay, got to keep going. Right. You know, can't stop, like you said. <laughs> um, and lazy bitches back then didn't get nine weeks off for just having a kid or anything. <laughs> yeah, uh, unless they were, like, rich. <laughs> I'm kidding. By the way, I'm kidding. It was a joke. In case you couldn't tell, in case you couldn't hear me waving my hands behind my head, it was a joke. Uh, I couldn't hear you, but, you know, that's okay. Uh, well, it, was, it wasn't for your benefit. You can visually see me flailing oh. my hands like I've got some having some kind of fucking conniption fit. Well I can't see. I mean right now I can't see you but now because well, you got your it. finger in your eye. I mean I well, passed I my itchy a... eyes onto you via <laughs> via camera. Well I also <laughs> have a, a screen up in front of me that you know has all my notes. I don't ah. have two I'm not you know I'm not rich like you and have two different fucking screens. Yes, yes I'm rich because I spent a uh, hundred dollars on one of them and got the other one for my birthday uh three years ago yes well listen i am rich, rich. hey <laughs> god damn uh, i am scrooge mcduck style <laughs> over here yes so anyway all right so now moving on to the haunting portion of this uh of this tavern so remember how i said jesse james had stayed there and he shot rounds into the paintings yeah and he, put and he said in the it, hole. It, no he I said that, that it was up. uh he said it was birds to you know just throw people off because well the reason why he stated that was to cover up what really possibly happened uh. um, <laughs> he he had actually claimed to others that while he was staying there he got woken up uh in his, you know he was passed out and woke up to find someone like a stranger just in his room. And he's like, what the hell? And that's why he shot. Because, <laughs> Quantrell's you know, he, ghost. <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh shit. You know, somebody's this, they're coming after me or whatever. The fucking specter uh, of bloody Bill Anderson just showing up. He's like, oh shit, boss. And fucking shoots at him. Well, they, uh, it, it, like it was there. And then all of a sudden it just vanished. And he, you know, he shot at it and never, didn't even hit it. So that's Iron why. Bolts. That's why there. Well, there's the holes. Is because he thought there was somebody there, you know, looking to get him. Because you know, he was a wanted man. Uh, now tavern guests have reported seeing a strange woman as well, uh, having and having their stuff moved, and also even taken. Some uh, uh some of these happenings could be the work of George Talbot's kids, because during the first two years of him owning the place, six of his uh, kids actually died. Two were, that. yeah, two uh, of the deaths were quite tragic. Uh, one that tumbled down the stairs, and another was a lovesick daughter who actually. Kind of hanged herself. I, 
kind yeah. well let, let let okay you you can't kind of hang yourself you you do yeah well yeah and i guess um mrs talbot um died there as well and she has actually been seen many times floating around the tavern up it, up uh, up and down the stairs and she's all decked out in a, in a white uh dress I was just about to say, let me guess, wearing white. Yeah. Because that's the only fucking I mean, color ghosts wear. Well, I mean, when you're buried, you know, back then you didn't have, I mean, I think you're buried in white. If you're you know, a woman. I, saw, I saw a thing on Facebook that, that made a lot of sense. It's like, you always hear all these stories about like Victorian era ghosts. You never see a fucking ghost in bell bottoms and a tie dye shirt. Like, what, did they just not fucking die in the 70s? Did the 70s not create ghosts? Nah, too many acid trips. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this motherfucker so, looking like Jerry Garcia walking through your wall. Hey, yeah. man. What the fuck? Yeah. Was no, it a, man. Did you see a ghost? No, there's fucking hippies in here. <laughs> uh, there's actually, it's uh, been reported a ghost of a little girl. Uh, that's often seen scurrying around the dining room, Ugh. which probably is one of his you know, kids. Nothing good scurries. <laughs> no. At least one guest has reported feeling a child spooning her while she slept in the Ooh. general's quarters room. Ooh. Yeah. Big spooning or little spooning? I don't. Well, it'd be a little spoon, of course. Never know. That's, that's what you know. That's what kids do. They like to you know snuggle up. Well, you can you can still snuggle up to somebody's back. Yeah. My okay. I, I'm li- I'm little spoon to my dogs half the time, so. Uh, it happens. It does. Uh, the most yeah. famous ghostly visitor is supposedly Jesse James. Um. Yeah. They out. Jesse they. <laughs> they out. Um. Because I guess you know. Well. I don't know. He liked the place so much, he came back to haunt it. Yeah, might as well. Uh, he got killed by some little bitch that shot him in the back. So yeah. So they, they the mostly uh, what was seen are apparitions, but there are stories that that people see um, round balls of light, which you call orbs, moving around the room in the middle of the night, or flashes of light without cameras. Mm-hmm. Uh, more stories include movements of objects without any cause, such as forks and glasses on dining room tables moving without anyone touching them, keys disappearing from the front desk and showing up down the hall on the floor later the, in, uh, that day. Furniture has been known to start jumping up and down without any reason. Some have seen shadows walk out of dark corners into the light before disappearing. The sounds that are most heard are music, clocks chiming out during late night hours, doors opening and closing when no one else is in their building, and lots of footsteps all hours of the day. Now, before I continue, uh, I actually was uh, um, looking at doing some research, and I actually found a story uh, this guy that actually went to your went to this place and actually stayed there, and I believe what was it? He there was only like four or five people that were actually stayed there that night, and uh, one of one of the the people the groups was actually a, a couple, and I I don't I, I'm trying to remember what it was. But I think he said he got like he got bit or by by uh by something. Well, he basically went to bed and started to like hallucinate and like got like the sweats and kind of like had like a fever and everything. Well, he said while he was trying to get sleep, he said he kept hearing like people walking up and down the hall. And doors opening and closing. That's fucking inconsiderate. And he goes, he's like, I don't know what it was. He goes, I, 
I, I just kept hearing this, but you know, after like thinking about it, I'm thinking that I was just hallucinating. But at the same time, he goes, "It was kind of strange that I kept hearing the vo- hearing voices, right, you know, outside, and you know, footsteps and you know, doors opening, closing." So he's like, "I don't know," but. You know, maybe maybe he did hear something. Maybe he actually did, or maybe he did hallucinate it, as he said. Yeah, got the meat no sweats. No one knows. Yeah. Um, so, uh, knocking at doors with no one there when you open to see who was knocking happened else as well. An old piano that was heard playing at what has been heard playing itself, and voices calling out of an of empty areas. A former bookkeeper tells this story. One night while closing, she started up the stairs to take the money to the safe and was frightened when she saw a man standing in a long coat walk across the top landing. About the same time, the cook came along from the kitchen and also saw the stranger. They both were surprised because no one else was supposed to be in the building. They went up the stairs and followed him through several rooms and eventually saw him go through the fire escape door. When the bookkeeper and cook went to open the door to see if he had gone down the fire escape, he was standing on the landing. He turned around to face her and started a hideous laugh and then disappeared right in front of their eyes. Whoa, fuck. Okay. Uh, About three weeks later, she was watching a TV special on TV, of course, and yeah. they showed a picture of Jesse James. She grabbed her husband's arm and said, oh, my God, that's the same face I saw the other night when the man disappeared. Since then, they called him. They call him Jesse James. Huh. Uh, two other employees have claimed to have seen this man walking in the halls at different times. Uh, so, just kind of weird. That's fucking crazy. Like, the fucking ghost of Jesse James just chilling out in this little, like, bar in the middle of nowhere, Kentucky. Yeah. And what town is this in again, I'm sorry? Uh, Bardstown. Hmm. So, on on one occasion, a couple in the middle of, uh, in the middle of the night, uh, left because of a terrifying experience when the lady, lady in white, uh, came across them. They Later, they called back to tell us why they left. The, they both woke up at the same time to see a lady in white hovering... Oh, hoover, uh, they hoovering. both woke up. Yeah. <laughs> Bitch, is that uh, vacuuming? <laughs> yep. They both woke up at the same time to see a lady in white hovering over them. She was looking down at them and then she turned and floated out the window beside the bed. That was enough for them. Yeah. yeah. Fucking Mary Poppins jumps out your window. Be like, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so he, he, he claims that this guy that works there claims that during the day when I have been getting the dining room ready for the dinner hour, I have seen on three occasions a lady walk through the Audubon dining room. When I would go check to see who uh, who was there, I would I could never find her. She uh, was always uh, dressed the same. She was thin, had long brown ha- wavy hair, and had a long white eighteen hundreds dress on. Uh, and then also, um, before the, actually the 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 tavern had actually burned. Uh, right. The manager of the place has cl- claims that he actually uh, had seen uh, balls of light hovering over his bed, and then bounced around the room that, and they would awaken him up at night. He said hmm. that uh, some of them were different colors, like red, yellow, and white. And at one point, he tried to get up, but felt as if something was holding him down. He That's said it was weird. like electricity was running through him without pain. That's like some sleep paralysis shit going on there too. 
Yeah. Damn. Um, I guess also the TV is said to come on and then turn off all night long in some rooms and that the heater was constantly turned up so hot uh, that different people couldn't sleep. Hey, no, 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 no. And then they said they, they, they would get up and turn it down and then wake up again with it like so hot that they couldn't breathe. That's fucking gross. Yeah. So I hate sleeping in in the hot. Yes. It's just it's it's awful, awful, awful. Oh, so it's gross. that yes, yeah, so that is the old Talbot Tavern. And we got a goddamn Jesse James ghost. That's insane. Yes, exactly. So let's take a break here and then oh, yeah. we'll come back and we'll jump into yours. Oh boy, will we? All right. You ready? We're back. We are back, oh. as a matter of fact. So, Kevin, what are you covering? Okay, so wh- what I'm covering is we're going to stick mostly to what's referred to as the Gateway region of Kentucky, which is the northeastern corner of the state that covers the counties of Bath, Menifee, Montgomery, Morgan, and Rowan. It sits between the Bluegrass region and the Appalachian Mountain Range. So the Appalachians are wild country. Uh, we Like we've discussed before, Pretty much anywhere connected to the Appalachians has got some crazy stories and legends. Everything from goat men to bunny men to cannibalistic redneck families. Not making that last one up. So the fact that there's some werewolf stories shouldn't really surprise anybody. So it's uh, it's been a minute since we talked about werewolves. As a matter of fact, it's been... Uh, uh, going on four years since we've talked about fucking werewolves on this show. <laughs> No. Yeah, dude, the, our fucking werewolf and dogman episode, that was like our third episode we recorded. No, no, no. 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 We talked about uh, werewolves in Vermont. Yeah, but that's that wasn't actually werewolves. That was more of the, like, the, the legends from, like, French Canada that rolled down into here. These are, like, legit werewolf stories. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. So one of the earlier tales of these critters dates back to the early 1800s when a guy by the name of Nils Wills, swear to Christ, Nils Wills, uh, was one of the first European settlers, not American, but the first, one of the first people to come to America from Europe and then settle there in that yep. particular that particular part of country. Yep. He became pretty good friends with the local Cherokee tribes that passed through uh, that were when they were out hunting. And one day, while out trying to scare up some deer, Nils has a slight misstep and falls off a cliff. Um, so he was in pretty rough shape when the Cherokees came back through and found him. They brought him back to their tribal elders to see if uh, if they could do anything to help him. Uh, after uh, after a meeting they determined the only way to help him was, was to try a ritual called the wolf gift. There's no record as to what this ritual, like what went into this ritual. Uh, All we know is the next morning after they did it, Nils was completely healed. What Nils didn't know is that the ritual did more than heal him. It was an old Cherokee spell that turned him into a Limpkin, which is the Cherokee version of a werewolf. Which, when I first saw it, I was like, Limpkin, I wonder if that's related to the Blumpkin. The uh, the, the, the fictional creature of bathroom lore. You know? <laughs> no. <laughs> nope. Anybody that doesn't know what that is, Google Blumpkin on your work computer. I promise you won't be disappointed or get fired or anything. The Cherokee considered this transformation a gift, but Nils, who was of German and Christian descent, disagreed when Nils learned what they'd done to him he lost his mind went on a rampage and killed every member of the tribe that helped him every member of the tribe that carried him there and every member of their families he then ran off into the woods where he roamed and killed every Indian he came across and it's presumed that he died somewhere around 1810 but there's still stories of a uh, of an old German man living out in the hills that has some tricks up his sleeve and just will go after anybody that comes across his property. 
So that's what I've got for this week. No, I'm fucking with it. <laughs> huh. That's so this cool. one, this one's pretty fucking cool. Um, I'll just get into it. You'll you'll enjoy this one. Okay. Another story comes in from Johnson County in 1944, which is just southeast of the Gateway region, but it's still right there. They're still all uh-huh. all kind of connected. So it's like the southern expanse of what they would consider the Gateway region. Yep. It's a nice warm summer night and uh, for a bunch of cuts, gouges, scrapes, uh, some bruises, and some broken ribs. It's around 11 p.m. when the boy and his mother arrive, and uh, mom seems concerned not only for the safety of her boy, but also for her reputation in the community. So some of the staff told stories saying that they'd overheard the mother telling the boy that you can tell him whatever happened. You can tell him what you think happened. Nobody's ever going to believe you. They're going to think that, you know, you just fell down a hill or something and you, you got hurt. They're not going to believe your story. Yeah. But when the doctors asked him to tell him, Hey, what happened? This is when the story gets interesting. He told him he'd been out fishing along the stream near his house And as the sun started to set, he gathered his gear and his huge stringer of fish and starts home. As he's walking up the hill, he reaches the crest and he hears this really really loud, low growl coming from the wood line. He looks over towards the trees and he sees a huge creature that breaks from the wood line. He described it as being six to seven feet tall, silvery gray and moving fast and upright. And was shaped like a man, but had the head of a wolf. This kid is a fucking gangster. He'd spent all day, like, down in the creek fishing, trying to put some food on the table for his family. Keep in mind, this is a, this car, uh, part of Kentucky was hit pretty hard during this time. Uh, keep it, uh, remember, it's also, you know, World War II is raging across Europe. So, fairly good chance that this kid's dad is potentially overseas fighting Nazis. And he's basically the man of the house at this point. So he stands his ground. And at first, this the, the beast just tries to rip the stringer of fish away from him. This kid's fucking tough. He holds tight onto the line. And this thing starts dragging him down the across the, the field. Drags him about 20 feet before he finally loses his grip. The creature you know he's then... Yelling the whole, you know he's yelling the whole time? No, you motherfucker! Get your own fish! That was my fish, you cocksucker. <laughs> that was mine. <laughs> so the, the beast then doubles back and scoops the boy up off the ground and hurls him into the trees. Take my, so, Don't take my fish, mister. Mom was going to be pissed at me. <laughs> so this thing just fucking whips him into a, like a, a stand of trees. And he gets up and grabs a fucking big heavy branch, charges at it, and just starts wailing on a goddamn werewolf beating on it with a stick take that motherfucker i mean i wish i could have been around at the time and like listen kid i'll give you some pointers here i'm not an expert or nothing but you're gonna need either ash like you know like ash wood because that's a big thing with werewolves or it's got to be silver and you got to jam it right in its fucking heart but this kid gave it a run for his money um so he's just pounding on this thing with a stick and then it just slashes at him as he turns, gets him across the back, and it knocks him back down the hill that he had just hiked up. He ends up rolling all the way down the hill, crashing into the rocks in the embankment, and almost goes into the water. This fucking kid gets back to his feet, looks up the hill, and sees this werewolf just standing there looking at him, holding his hard-caught fish, and then runs back into the woods. Tell me he flips him off. Fuck you! I, that's the thing. It's like I like to think this kid just got up and yells "fuck you" at this thing and just gave it the finger the whole way it was running back. <laughs> you son of a bitch! Right. So then we circle back to where we started from. Uh, the the boy walking home hurt and pissed and telling his mom what had just happened. What I like about this story is that it was never re- uh, like relayed to a news source. This is all being told from the boy uh, by the boy to the doctor and then the person that would eventually tell this to someone who was writing a book about like local legends and folklore, the person that told the the author was the nurse that listened to the whole story. 
So this is all kind of like a third hand account, but it was never like sent to a newspaper where they would have fucking, you know, just shit all over this kid and ruined his life. Hey, stop for a second. Do you have a, a candle going? Yes. I do. Why is it bothering okay. your sinuses? No. Uh, you see a little wisps of smoke. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's actually, I just, yeah, it's I... actually, I got a hippie stick burning next to me. Okay. Because I was like, I saw fucking like something like go across. And then I saw, I'm like, okay. Yeah. What the fuck no, just it's... happened? It's smoke. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Yeah, you're, we're good. So, um, here, here's my thing so far. What if this is a misidentification? It's actually really Dogman. Well, Dogman and Werewolf, same difference, essentially, in, in, this, in these cases. Uh, well... We've had, we had that discussion before. A werewolf is someone that can turn into a wolf. I th- in my opinion, and I think a dog man is a dog man is a dog man. Like dog man doesn't have a day job; he's just a fucking dog man. No, you know what I mean. Dog, a werewolf. You're born a werewolf. A dog man. You're just you know. Well, I mean, it's it's whatever it is. You know, it's a no, it's a fucking creature. Right. It's a it's a natural woods. animal. Yeah. Werewolf. You yeah. can be turned into a werewolf, or you could be born it. Yeah, not 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 as often though, in the stories. Um, well, well, yeah. But anyway, uh, there it seems like there's a possibility this is dog man. That's yeah. I mean, it's say. I mean, people aren't going to explain it as a dog man. They're going to go, oh, it's a fucking werewolf because that's what yeah. common, you know, more common conception would be. Yeah. Well, I mean, this time frame, you know up to whatever you know i mean even nowadays people will, people will be like oh it's a fucking werewolf it's a giant wolf yeah. running around on two legs yeah you know the people that stop to go wait was that a werewolf or a dog man are the ones you never hear their stories because their ass got eaten out in the woods because they stopped to think what it was first yeah. instead of just going i gotta run and they get back to the car and being like hey so was that a werewolf was that a dog man or was that like a type whatever for Bigfoot or something? You but know? there are some people that, like, I was listening to, uh, I don't know, it's a podcast. And I can't remember the name of it. One one that you turned me on to. Anyway. Uh, the confessional? Yes. Yeah. I think it was. Uh, this lady was talking uh, about how she feels that dogmen are – you know they're perfectly fine. They, she doesn't. You know, she feels fine with them. She just ignores them. You know, she doesn't really. She sees them, ignores them. They don't bother her. She's had encounters with. She says she knows the difference between a dog man and a, and a werewolf. She's had. She says encounters with both. Um, so she, you know, she, she says that you can. She claims. That you could tell the difference between them. I don't think I'd want to get close enough to either or to be like, yeah, I, I yeah, that's that's what this one is. I think she said the difference is what that dog man is more animalistic versus the werewolf, which is more human. Because that's what, yeah, because it's a person that's transformed. Yeah. Well, anyway, but the so but if you go back far enough, technically a werewolf would have been someone who turns into a wolf, not like a fucking not like Wolfman style, but like they turn into an actual four legged wolf. Yeah, supposedly. So I mean, that's, right. that's that's one legend. I mean, that one goes back thousand like th- a thousand years at least in Europe, like over in uh, like Greece and uh, Scandinavia, all that way. That's all very similar. Yeah, but Native Americans have the same tale, but it's a man that turns into, you know, something like a Sasquatch because they have stories of of a Sasquatch, right? You know, in, in their in their lore, right? So, and well, I mean, even whole... even over there, they have Sasquatch lore that goes back quite a ways. 
Okay. You know, you got like uh, in in uh, uh, like the UK, you got like old stories of uh, the Green Man or the Wood Man, uh, Woodwos, shit like that that goes back hundreds of years. Yeah. Whereas it was a wild man in the woods, you know? Yep. So we're coming up to our last werewolf story, and then I've got another really fun one to end it with. <laughs> so, okay. um, so there's Boyd County is another area in that same kind of neighborhood where you've had stories since the 1700s floating around. Um, not just, uh, not just, you know, like settlers, but you also have stories from the natives that go back that far. Realistically, probably go back farther, but the 1700s is basically when, you know, Native American history starts because, uh, we got here to record it. You know, because <laughs> you can't have history without fucking white folks. Well, um, I mean, we wrote... Well, you can't. No, you really... I mean, you can't have it because, well... <laughs> we wrote down history. Right. You know, so if they didn't write it down, you can't... I mean... You can hear about different things, but you know, without it written down, you nobody knows about it, right? Other than so, word of mouth, yeah. That's that, that, that turns into folklore. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's folklore in Europe where because it was pre-written history, you know, it doesn't exist. It exists, but it doesn't truly exist because you don't know. If it's been changed over the years, correct. Like, like things like Beowulf and, uh, you know, some of those other ones. Gilgamesh. You don't really know Gilgamesh. Even you know, you don't really know how accurate they are. You know, or, uh, like stuff where, uh, what was it, uh. Some of like the Greek and stuff, you know, the Greek happenings or before the Greeks, you know, where you got like uh, Plato and Aristotle telling stories about people that were alive thousands of years before. But they, ne- right. they never met them. Right. So, I um, mean. So, Gilgamesh, I th- are, are we both in the uh, both in the same page? Uh, Nephilim? Yeah. Giant hairy fucker. Yeah. So Boyd County, we've got those stories going back all those years. They really start to pick up some heat in the 1980s, uh, especially around an area in Ashland. It's a a cemetery in Ashland where there's uh, there's been a pile of reports of werewolves lurking around the cemetery. The strangest part to me is some of these sightings have been in broad daylight. People are just cruising by. And there's just a fucking werewolf climbing a fence in broad daylight. Yeah. Right? It's kind of... Okay. All yeah. right. But one of the most believable stories that I found, because I, I actually found a book. Uh, let me see. I got to pull it up on my Kindle. I've got it on my phone also. On my Kindle app on my phone. By the way, if you have a Kindle and you have a phone, super fucking handy. Download the app. The book is called Kentucky Cryptids, Monsters of the Bluegrass State, and you can get it on Kindle Unlimited. It's a pretty good fucking read. Um, Author's name is Ron Coffey, by the way. Give him some credit. Um, One of the most believable stories from this area comes from October of 1987, when around 10 p.m., a pair of uh, Boyd County sheriffs get called out to the cemetery for the uh, for a report of someone having seen this monster creature dogman werewolf whatever you want to call it jump over not climb jump over the 10 foot high wall into the graveyard that's a pretty good jump yeah so the officers are understandably skeptical because as a police officer you have to i think you would have to have a fairly healthy amount of skepticism into stuff like this where you'd be like, okay, this is a bunch of teenagers fucking with us and we're going to get out here and there's going to be nothing. We wasted a trip. Of course. Yeah. 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 So they arrive, get out of the car and turn on their flashlights, walk up to the main gate. Uh, 
obviously being police officers, they kind of have, you know, master key to get into shit like this because teenagers get in and cause trouble. And you have to be able to get in there and, you know, crack some skulls. So they, they unlock the gate and go in. And a very short time after walking in, they notice this large shadow moving through the cemetery up ahead of them. One of them hits this real tall headstone with his flashlight, and this creature steps out from behind it. Anywhere from seven to eight feet tall, covered in matted brown hair, long pointed ears like a German shepherd, and a long snout like a dog. They're standing there looking at this thing, and it just takes off running at them on its back feet. They don't really know what to think of, so they just kind of drop their shit and run. So flashlights go flying, and they run back to the gate. Well, of course. Who the fuck? I mean, <laughs> yeah, you, know? you fucking saw something like that. Yeah, and I, I know Peace. people will be like, <laughs> yeah, people will be like, well, they've got guns. You don't know if this is a dude in a costume. You and you know, you <laughs> fucking shoot somebody. You know, so you have to kind of, you have to be careful with shit like that. Because, yeah, you could unload your service revolver into this thing. Like, oh, I got it. And you get up there to some fucking 19-year-old kid stoned off his ass running around in a dumb costume. And then you're in trouble. (laughs) Or it's some fucking, you know, some fucking weird thing that you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah, and you, you put six fucking 38 rounds in it, and that just makes it mad. Exactly. You know, so are you, gonna, are, are you gonna piss it off, or are you gonna kill it? You're yeah. probably just gonna piss it off, most likely. Yeah. So, so they get back to the gate, and they're start. They're trying to open it to find out that the gate got locked behind them somehow. Oh fuck! <laughs> so they find themselves in a very unenviable situation, trapped between a locked ten foot high iron gate and a fucking werewolf. Not uh, not a good place to be. So the animal continues towards them, weaving through rows of headstones. And at this point in time, the, these are guys that grew up in, I'm assuming grew up in like a rural area of Kentucky that have been out in the woods before and kind of know what they're, what they're looking at. They realize this thing's hunting them. It's not just running at them. It's, it's looking for a, a route in to get the best angle and come up on their blind side. So it gets to within about 30 feet and it starts pacing back and forth between uh, like a couple of different rows, just looking at them and they can kind of see the the light reflecting from the moon off its eyes. And they're, uh, they're just staring at this thing watching. And all of a sudden they saw it, they noticed its ears perk up. Then it looked towards the wood line and just bolted for the trees. So these dudes kind of stand there for a couple of minutes and they're just like, Maybe we don't move because that's what it's trying to trick us into moving. And then it's going to come after us when we're not looking. So after a couple of minutes, they realized it was gone. So they climbed the gate, get back to the cruiser and call for fucking backup. Yeah. So another, another crew of, uh, of sheriffs come out and, uh, they search the area and they find absolutely no evidence. Um, and unfortunately, I bet that these poor sons of bitches that just had this fucking run in probably got harassed for the rest of their careers while they were with that department. They probably get the shit picked out of them like, oh, yeah, these are the crazy assholes that said they saw a werewolf, you know, even though they actually did, you know, and that's that's what makes this encounter more believable to me is. These people are trained observers, they're not going to misidentify that for you know a fucking bear or something like uh, that no they saw a fucking dog man yeah and i mean like seven to eight feet tall is huge there's not really much you know when you think about it when you have gravestones like tall gravestones that are you know five six seven feet tall yeah. and you can you can use those as kind of a, a visual aid to to fairly accurately estimate the height because yeah. you could you could later you know go and measure this gravestone and go okay that's a that's seven and a half feet tall and the thing was eye level with it so yeah, it puts or, it at least seven it was, and a half feet or it was a head or so taller 
you know? Right, exactly. But having those visual aids like that makes it easier for you to get an accurate gauge of the size of it. Yeah. Um, and again, for the most part, they're, they're, they're believable people. They're not going to lie about this shit because they probably didn't want to see this thing in the first place. They thought they were getting prank called out there to go fucking, you know, probably end up picking up some drunk idiot teenager. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, no, they get chased by, by a the fucking monster instead. So that's what I got for werewolves. But that's not the last story I have for Kentucky. This may be the best story ever told on this show. <laughs> We've told some incredible tales of bravery, unimaginable stories of savagery committed by some of the worst people that have ever lived. But this is a story about a black bear that went on some crazy ass bender. September 11th, okay. the night. <laughs> uh, September 11th, 1985, pretty regular Wednesday, rural Kentucky, until uh, this old fellow is going out to check his mailbox, you know, stretch his legs a little bit. He didn't expect to walk out his front door and almost immediately trip over a dead body of a man in his driveway. Uh, the body would eventually be identified as Andrew C. Thornton, a former Army paratrooper, nar uh, narcotics officer, lawyer and purple heart recipient for some action that had taken place uh, in the, uh, in the Dominican Republic during a revolution. Just because he has all these things doesn't make him a good guy. Uh, as it turned out, he was actually a fairly lifelong criminal and would eventually before his death, obviously become a drug smuggler for a ring calling themselves quote, the company realistically with the background that this guy has the nickname that the organization has given themselves. My first thought was like, Oh, Oh, he works for the CIA. He's smuggling drugs in the eighties for the CIA. Pretty common thing. Not unheard of. So this old dude calls the cops to report that there's a dead guy in his dooryard. Um, dead guy is wearing a bulletproof vest, a parachute, not one, not two, but several handguns. Not specific, but more than two, I would assume. Uh -huh. And fucking night vision goggles. So the cops get there, scrape him off the pavement, and get him back to the morgue where he would later be identified. But that's not the exciting part of the story. Right around three months later, uh, park rangers at the Chattahoochee National uh, Park in Georgia discover the wreckage of the plane that Thornton had uh, had set to autopilot so he could jump out with his package. So when they approach the down plane, they start noticing there's shredded plastic and packaging tape all over the place. But more uh, so at this point in time, more realistically, probably looking for the remains of anybody that could have been on the plane. What they did find were the remains of 40 plastic bags with a white powdery residue inside them and a dead 175 pound black bear. Remembering that this is the mid eighties in the South Southeastern ish corner of the United States. Uh, they guessed correctly that it was not powdered sugar, but cocaine in them bags uh, doing their jobs as forest rangers, drag the dead black bear back to the truck and uh, bring it in for some testing. So they get it to the bear coroner or whatever. Um, and they open up the bear and they find, I shit you not, 32 kilos of cocaine in the bear's gut. So if you're trying to convert that in your head, that's 70 pounds of cocaine that this bear chewed through. Wow. <laughs> so the medical examiner says, quote, its stomach was literally packed to the brim with cocaine. There isn't an animal alive on the planet that could survive that. Cerebral hemorrhaging, respiratory and heart failure, stroke, you name it, the bear had it. <laughs> so knowing that this bear went out like Keith Richards should have a thousand times over, <laughs> the doctor sends it off to be taxidermy. That brings, that brings a whole new meaning to being coked out of your brain. Dude, yeah, like this, yeah. This bear was the fucking backup drummer for like Guns N' Roses or some shit with the amount of cocaine it was doing. 
Yeah. <laughs> so they end up having to set off to be taxidermied. And once the project's finished, he's sent to the visitor center at the Chattahoochee River National Recreation Area, the park where they found him. Shortly after, the building was actually damaged by a fire and the bear was moved to Dalton, Georgia. And from there, he kind of goes missing for a while. Someone knowing the backstory of said bear is trying to track it down and they end up tracing it to a pawn shop. But the pawn shop owner had already sold him to Whalen goddamn Jennings, who was probably doing coke when he bought the bear. <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> right? So he's eventually sold off again and ends up in uh, in Las Vegas in the mansion of Ron Thompson, who was kind of like a, a celebrity agent, you know, like a, for movie stars and shit like that. Um, then when Thompson died, his estate went up for auction. And a man, uh, a man by the name of Zhu Tang, who owned a local traditional Chinese medical shop, bought him. Thankfully, he was not ground up to make magical boner pills like so many bears and tigers before him. But in 2016, he was eventually brought back to Kentucky, uh, was eventually brought back to the Kentucky Fun Mall in Lexington due to his connection to one of the weirdest stories in the state's history. Crazy. So that had everything. It had guns. It had body armor. It had fucking Waylon Jennings. It had bears sure. on cocaine. Yeah. The this, this story has everything. And they're actually talking about making this into a movie. I don't know how much of a movie you're going to make it into because the bear just like sucked down a bunch of coke and just died. I mean, unless you're going to change it to like, you know, change the storyline to, you know, he, uh, he busts into some fucking meth factory in the middle of town and gets all freaked out on speed and go, <laughs> just running around fucking flipping cars and stuff. I don't know. I mean, it's still pretty interesting, uh, though. Yeah. I don't know, man. The only thing they could have made it better is if it was a grizzly bear on cocaine in the middle of town. Because everybody would have died. Probably. It would have killed the fucking werewolves. I can tell you. Maybe. Get a 1,200-pound grizzly bear just ripping lines of coke off the sidewalk. He's going to go fight anything. He doesn't give a shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fucking throwing buses around like the <laughs> like the Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> but so that's what I've got for Kentucky. Um, thank you, Kentucky, for having some great goddamn stories. Yeah. And I mean, we already kind of covered the big one at one point, but, you know, it is what it is. But well, we still found some good ones. Well, no, we covered two big ones. That's true. We did. We did. You know. Because we did Kelly Hopkinsville and we also did... Uh, 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 Waverly, Waverly Hills. Hills. So, yeah. I, again, thank you, Kentucky. You guys uh, are out of your fucking minds, and you have some great stories, and I love it. Yeah. So, with that said, if yeah. You're looking, if you're in the mood to get a pair of new headphones or earbuds or a Bluetooth speaker, look no further than Studio, because Studio has what you want. Just go over to studio.com and check out their Bluetooth head, uh, Bluetooth earbuds. They have all different varieties of them. They have also have the noise uh, noise canceling pair, which are the ETS, which you can buy a Wireless charging station charger. for them. Yes, Just and uh, if, or if you know headphones are more your style, they have two different varieties of those. They have the Klar and they have the Regent Two. Yes, the Regents. Sorry. Wow. Yeah. My brain. My brain. You know, lapsed. Or if you know what, <laughs> your brain neither... prolapsed. <laughs> if uh, yeah. if neither yeah, one of those are your option, brain fell out. <laughs> Sorry. If neither one of those your option, and you just want to say fuck it, I want to hear. Let everybody hear what I'm listening to. Try out their Bluetooth speaker. That's, I mean, it's an awesome little speaker. Works great. It's gangster, and it's got wicked battery life. Yeah. Like I mean, most of hours. It's ridiculous. All, all the studio products have wicked battery life. You know, I can't, I can't complain about it. And they're comfortable. No. no. Um, so, yeah. 
find what you want, put it in your basket, go to checkout, and put the promo code of DarkWindows15 in and get 15% off your entire purchase. Also, another little place you can go to. DarkWindowsPod.com. No promo code necessary. Yeah. Go over to DarkWindowsPod.com. That is our website, believe it or not. And you can find links to everything related to the show. We have links to our friends at Studio, where you can go get yourself some badass hearing equipment, I'm going to say, because I think it's probably the best way to word that. Um, has links to all of our social media. And it also has links to our Age of Radio page, which is the network that we're on. You can find every episode of this shit that we've ever recorded. And you can also find your next favorite podcast over there. Um, just wanted to take a quick second to, to thank Angel and Nikki at Color Me Dead. Um, unfortunately, with uh, they're, they're busy uh, with everything they've got going on. And they've actually had to uh, end the show, which sucks because those girls have been so helpful for us over the years. Um, we can't directly prove it but we have a sneaking suspicion that they're the reason that we got linked up with studio and also the network that we're on. So yeah. again, again, that we, we don't have like a, a line of forensic evidence to prove so, but there's a pretty good chance of it. Um, so thank you. Thank you ladies for everything you've done. Uh, look forward to at least staying in touch with you. Cause you guys are, <laughs> you guys are still kind of family at this point. Um, but with that being said, you can also go find links to our Facebook we are on Facebook.com. You go to your search thingy. You put in Dark Windows Podcast, and our shit pops up. Join uh-huh. the group. Join the group. We have awesome conversations going on over there. Um, occasionally, well, when my <laughs> occasionally when my depression kicks in a little bit, I'm like, hey, I want to see pictures of people's animals because my brain sucks. So there's always that. Um, we're also on Instagram and Twitter. Twitter via Dark Instagram. Win- <laughs> yeah, by Dark Windows Pod for each one. Yes, because neither one of us want to take the time or put in the effort to actually use Twitter because every time I go on Twitter, even for the show page, it's just political bullshit, and I fucking hate it. Yeah. So, um, yeah. But with that being said, um, Kevin, also, what do you have? Hey, before we go any further, also, we're on every platform just pretty much out there. And uh, rate, review, and subscribe. Yes. Okay. Please do. Yes. Uh, you know, and find yeah. us where all quality podcasts are sold in yes. your grocery freezer. You know, all that stuff. Not in the freezer. Uh, we we are okay. not available in drive throughs uh-huh. but you can play us at a drive thru uh-huh. and make the people at McDonald's real uncomfortable. Uh huh. So, so yeah. why yeah. don't you? So, uh, uh, so next week, uh, we're gonna. We're going to do a little uh, backtracking. Let's put it that way. Um, because we never really did anything for, for Memorial Day. And we it's, always we always try to do something for it. Yeah, it slipped, it slipped us this year, to be honest. So, well, we had, it didn't we had a game. We had a game it's plan. We had a game plan. You know, and, you know, and it happened to fall into it. So... Next week, we're going to cover some stuff for Memorial Day. We're going to cover some, you know, some badasses, I guess, or or, or awesome events. Let's, uh, let's, let's give the people a little, like, tiny hint. What era is yours? Mine's in uh, Civil War. Okay. And since we're, we're discussing Memorial Day, it's safe to, uh, to figure that both of our folks are American. Uh, mine is during World War I. Mm. And... Oof, what a fucking badass! <laughs> yeah, uh, when you when you yeah. have other people that come along later in later in the timeline that are like the scariest, baddest sons of bitches that have ever put on a uniform, and they look at the at somebody and go, "That guy's my hero." You're like, "Fuck!" Like, dude's crazy, crazy cool. Hmm. So, but until next week, just because you can't see out into the dark doesn't mean that the dark can't see into you. Good time period to you whenever you're listening. Yes. Avita <laughs> Zane. Good almost morning as we record this. Ha <laughs> Kevin, hit some music. Hey, everybody. Before we go, 
Uh, just a quick post-production note. I just finished editing the show, and as I was going through, I think we caught something. Um, I've mentioned more than once <laughs> that uh, my wife and I are pretty sure that our house is haunted, and I may have actually caught some audio evidence of that. Um, I'm going to stop talking for a minute, and I'm going to play you a potential EVP that we caught while we were recording. Um, it definitely came through on my end and not Kevin's, because it, if it had come through on Kevin's, I feel like I would have heard it through my ear, uh, through my headphones. But I didn't, and I didn't hear it sitting here until after I recorded. Um, so just for some quick context, it's a very short clip. I've looped it multiple times so you can kind of hear what's being said. Um, and I caught it in about a half a second gap where Kevin was talking, where he was kind of like between thoughts almost. So he... I don't think he would have had time to say anything. It doesn't sound like him to me, even in a low tone like it's in. It wasn't me. I was sitting in my studio alone. Kevin was at in his apartment by himself other than the dog, but obviously dogs don't speak English. So I'm going to stop talking real quick and play this, and I'll be right back with what I think was being said. Um, because of the timing of where it was, it's kind of interesting, but I want you to listen to it first so that I don't pollute your thought of what was said. Okay, so <laughs> I would love to get your take on what you guys think you heard. Um, the timing is weird with this one because I had kind of like popped up a little bit off my seat to, to readjust. Um, guys, you know how it is. Occasionally, you gotta you, you got to rearrange your balls. You know, you got to get comfortable again. Um, so I came up to like just a little bit more of a squat than over my chair. And then I sat back down after I got everything squared away. Um, due to the editing, you don't really hear the noise of me st sitting up and then, you know, standing up and sitting back down in the chair. Um, also, my chair is new and pretty quiet. Um, but it was just as I was sitting back down that this happened kind of between Kevin's words. So... <laughs> To me, it sounds like someone telling me to sit down. Um, I've sent it out to a couple of other people to get their opinion on it without saying what I thought about it at first as well. And they came back with the same thing saying it sounds like a person saying sit down. Um, so, yeah, I think I might have proof that my house is haunted finally, other than just the shit that I've seen. Um so, yeah. <laughs> oh. It just, it, it freaked me the fuck out when I was sitting here listening. I was like, I got the speaker going and I'm like, okay, just kind of, you know, keeping my notes and getting my, my editing times in. And all of a sudden now you just hear, sit down. And I'm like, what the fuck was that? So, um, yeah, it, it freaked me out. I sent it to Kevin. It freaked him out. We tried to debunk it and we're having a hard time. So, let's see what you guys think. And uh, with that being said, I'm going to ask Kevin to hit the music one more time, even though, due to the magic of editing, he's no longer uh, on the other line. But, Kevin, hit that music. Music. <laughs> 